All right, hello guys. How's it going? In today's video, we're going to be going over our winner thoughts. I don't even know what episode this is. It'll be in the title, but right now it's kind of away from me right now. Uh, I'm also very excited to announce before we get into the intro that Thursday, September 30th, that's going to be actually, I'm going to be releasing my fourth and biggest winter forecast of all time. We have changed pretty much everything about that winter forecast and that's coming out on Thursday. I know a lot of you have been asking about that, so I wanted to go ahead and announce that ahead of time. Anyway, let's get straight into the video after the intro. <laughs> Right now, but be sure to like the video, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. For today's comment of the day, I want to know which winter month are you looking forward to the most? My favorite is December usually, so that's what I'm looking forward to the most. But let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. I'd also like to announce that we made our snowfall forecast, which is basically just going over your average annual snowfall. That's going to be on the top right corner of your screen if you'd like to check out that very awesome video as well. Let's get straight into the sea surface temperatures here in the global. Uh, and we can see that there has been some cooling offshore of kind of the Pacific Northwest especially, that is going to lead towards more colder temperatures for those states in my opinion. Northern California possibly, but especially Washington and Oregon, I think this winter could be dealing with some colder than normal conditions. We also see that La Nina, it's going to hover around a weak La Nina or a neutral Enso for basically the entire winter. This is very interesting and we will be moving into a El Nino sorry, in the longer range, kind of heading towards next spring, next summer, next fall. Uh, we are expected to hit an El Nino eventually. It feels like we've been in a La Nina forever. So it is kind of an exciting change to think that there could be some differences uh, with the kind of conditions we're dealing with. We can see that the North Atlantic is looking very warm compared to normal for basically the entire ocean there. We're going to zoom into that in a moment. But first off, here's the seven day change. So we can see kind of the momentum of everything. Um, and you can see that cooling offshore of the Pacific Northwest again. I think that's happened kind of the shorter range. We also see some of that in the middle of the North Pacific. Very interesting. And the Enso, it just hasn't been able to consistently cool without some warming being involved as well. You can see there is some blues, there is some yellows and oranges. And this is generally what's held us back from just a straight out La Nina. Because every time there's cooling, there is also some warming. Uh, and it's been quite interesting. Now here is the entire North Atlantic and you can see this area is just very warm compared to normal. There are some colder pockets south of Greenland, south of Louisiana, uh, some in that main development region in between Africa and the main development region, but uh, mostly it's just warmer everywhere. And this will have some implications for sure, especially blocking wise. Here's the seven day change in the North Atlantic. And as you can see, actually over the past seven days, I'd say things have cooled more than they've warmed up. It's just been so warm throughout the entire summer that it isn't enough to really take us below normal whatsoever. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at some charts. We're going to take a look at our ENSO charts, especially. Uh, and then we're going to move on to some model guidance and take a look at how some of these models think we could have a very cold start to the winter, very early winter. We'll take a look at all of those things in just a moment. Now here are some charts. This is our Nino 3.4 index, and they use this to measure if we have an El Nino or a La Nina. This is the main index they use to kind of uh, specify that. This has been generally falling. This always reminds me of a stock chart. I am a bit of a trader myself, uh, but you notice how it's kind of up and down. Uh, there's trends, but right now we're kind of on a downtrend towards the end of September, where we finally crossed over that 0 0.5 line, and that's actually where we need to get to hit a La Nina. Now it needs to consistently be at that for a few months before it would officially be a La Nina. And this could be just in time uh, for us to be officially in a La Nina by the time we're reaching uh, the winter months if it keeps this downward or at least maintaining uh, that position where it's at. If it goes back up, we're going to be right back where we were kind of hovering around that negative 0 0.2 to negative 0 0.4 line, which we were hovering around basically for the end of July through now, uh, up until just uh, about a week or two ago when it started to really go down further than we've seen it do uh, throughout the entire summer, actually. Here's the North Atlantic chart, and this one's been generally warming for quite a while. It's finally starting to cool, which is very funny considering what we just took a look at because it doesn't look like it's done any cooling. Uh, but actually, over the past two weeks or so, it actually has 
uh, tapered off. It was at its all-time highs, on this chart at least, not all-time highs of all time, but uh, through the beginning of July till now, it was at the, its highest point towards the middle portion of September. It's done some cooling that's that, since then. Typically, when we see a lot of tropical activity, it actually cools down the waters, and I think that's actually what's taken place here. Here's our model predictions of ENSO from September 2021. This is an updated version of this, and this is basically the, the chart of the models trying to forecast what the ENSO is going to do. Uh, the, at the bottom, we have three-month periods, so S-O-N stands for September, October, November. And then you can see the next one is October, November, December, November, December, January. And then especially the one we want to pay attention to is December, January, February. That's our winter time. Now, as you can see, it's going to generally hover around where it's at. There is some that take it much lower. There is some that kind of take us back up towards a kind of neutral ENSO. But the majority here keep us at this very, very weak La Nina kind of place. And it actually does warm on a majority of these towards, towards the winter a little bit. Uh, but a lot of these, it doesn't warm enough to really take us back towards neutral ENSO status. Again, I was talking about how we might be heading towards a El Nino next year. It's usually obvious because usually you, I don't even know if there's been three La Ninas in a row ever. So we are expected to at least be in a neutral ENSO next winter, if not an El Nino, probably for the next two years or so. And then back to, you know, neutral ENSO La Nina territory. We can see that kind of happening at the end here. The last one is uh, May, June, July. And you can see we're back at kind of that neutral line heading upward. So that is a upcoming El Nino potentially. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on. And we're going to take a look at the probability forecast for La Nina, neutral Enzo, or El Nino for each of these periods. And then uh, we're finally going to move on and we're going to take a look at some modeled guidance. All right, now here we are taking a look at this chart and it's changed dramatically. If you remember, I actually showed this kind of, I want to say, my last Winter Thoughts couple of updates, I would say. And those were about, um, I would say about two weeks ago was the time I made the last one. Uh, we had shown that neutral ENSO had become a lot more higher probability. Well, now we've gone back in the other direction, back towards a La Nina favored forecast, uh, which with this recent cooling isn't a big surprise. Um, so as you can see, there's about a, for DJF, which again is December, January, February, or your meteorological winter, uh, we have about a 70 or 72 percent chance of La Nina status, and then about a 25 percent chance of neutral ENSO. So there's overwhelmingly large odds now that there will be a weak, weak, weak La Nina during the winter period. You can see that this probability peaks though during kind of the October, November, December, or November, de December, January forecast time period there and it actually starts to go down as we head towards um, the meteorological winter and then even beyond where neutral and so becomes a much higher probability for the springtime. Um, so that's the early September forecast. They did make an update here for mid-September as well. This is kind of a minor update uh, but as you can see kind of for winter we went a little bit down with the La Nina probability back to like a 60% chance so about 10% chance less and about 10% chance higher with the neutral and so but we reach a neutral end so much quicker on this one. January, February, March timeframe, it's about 50-50. And then February, March, April, you can see that the probability for neutral end so overtakes the La Nina one. So that's kind of when that flip happens in that time frame, according to these models. Now, I wanted to talk about different things. So Tropical Tidbits, their CFS forecast shows this. And then Weatherbell's CFS model shows this. Uh, the first one was for December, by the way. Uh, this is for January, or sorry, November. Real quickly, here is December, so you can see it's calling for colder conditions, but I want to backtrack here. Uh, November, it's calling for a very cold month here, um, and you're probably wondering, what's the difference? Like, why is this Weather Bell one calling for much colder conditions, and then the Tropical Tidbits one calling for warmer conditions? It's pretty much the opposite, but it's the same model. Well, as we move back to the Tropical Tidbits one, sorry for moving around so much, look at the top left there average of the last 12 forecasts so 12 runs times one member so it's one member it's just one individual model but it's taken the last 12 runs and combined them the weather bell one does not do this the weather bell one actually just uses the most up-to-date most recent forecast from this model so what this tells me is that about a week or two ago this model was calling for warmer conditions like a torch for the entire united states for december but in the most recent updates, the most up-to-date ones starting uh, this morning, they came out. 
Uh, it is calling for colder than normal conditions, not only for November here in the eastern United States, which could, you know, November can feel a lot like winter if we have colder than normal conditions. Uh, and sure enough, that looks like what this could be. We see a ridge out west in this as well. Uh, and then also a negative AO with those warmer temperature anomalies up there over northern Canada, also in Greenland. That causes the cold air to be able to blast down into the eastern United States. And we see that happen here. Um, and even in December here, it's a little less cold compared to normal, but it still is below normal temperatures. And your average temperature goes down into December. So in this kind of a scenario, we would still see a colder December than November, obviously. But we still see the trough is centered over the eastern United States and the ridge is centered over the western United States. And we still see those warmer than normal conditions set up over northern Canada there and then even portions of Greenland. And that is, again, that negative AO, which is allowing for that colder air to make its way down into the eastern United States. Even on this CFS uh, model here on our last winter thoughts update, this was from September. When was this from? Oh, September 13th. You can see this model was trying to indicate that during the winter we would have a trough centered over the eastern United States and a ridge centered over the western United States. This is our geopotential heights and it shows us what that jet stream looks like, uh, but it wouldn't show it on the temperature anomalies. And I think when you mix 12 runs together, it just kind of gives you this kind of bland, very averaged out forecast. And I think that's the problem here. Uh, with this model. So I think the most recent long range model guidance is suggesting uh, that November and December, at least we can't on, on the CFS monthly forecast from Weatherbell, we can't go out as far as the tropical tidbits. Well, I'm not exactly sure why that is, but the longest you can go out is actually to December. So January and February is a bit of a question mark um, on Weatherbell, at least. Uh, but at least November, and December look like very cold months in the eastern half of the country. Super, super interesting. For today's confidence tab, understandably, we're at a three out of six because things are still far out. We're almost to October, which means we're kind of in range to be able to see November and December and kind of give uh, some reasonable theories as to what could happen based on the current conditions. Uh, January and February are still a bit far out, and that's why our confidence is a little bit lower. Once we're into November and towards the end of November, especially, we will have a finalized winter forecast out that uses the current conditions that are not likely to change throughout the winter. So once you get close, that's the advantage you have. The current sea surface conditions, the current patterns, you know, over a three month period, you're not very likely to see a complete flip of those things. So you're going to have a much better handle on what those current conditions will translate to over the winter. So that's what what's going to increase our confidence as we head towards the month of October and even in through November. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys about those two tropical disturbances in the main development region. And James Marr said, I believe the two storms that are in the MDR region have potential to be hurricanes, but it's too early to tell. Uh, only time will tell with those ones, but I am tracking them actively. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Bennett, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Little the Pan, and Donna Carnes. Alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Cat Bite, Charles Stinnett, Sidney Klein, Mark J, Luke Lego, Gary's, John Khaleesi, Dwight Phelan, and Stephen Crenenthal. If you'd like to be part of this very exciting patron entry of the day, you could do so by joining our very amazing Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, Hair Farms 1, Cat Bite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.